What's up guys? I hope you're doing all right. Uh, today I've got three more presets for you for the electric violin. And of course if you're a guitarist watching this you can just apply a normal guitar amp block to it and you can use them in the same way. But I've really built them around the electric violin. So uh, we've got three different presets here in the ambient style. They're using all of the delays and the reverbs and modulation pitch shifting stuff that's built into the Helix. So anyone's going to be able to use these presets. If you have the HX effects unit, you won't have the amp block in it, but all the other effects are going to work great. You will need an expression pedal for this. So as we go through the three presets, I'm going to be talking through uh, what's going on, how they're working, and maybe I'll give a little bit of my own insight into how I created them and some instances, some different ways that I might use them personally. All right, so jumping over to HX Edit now, the first thing you always need to do is set up your input impedance. I go with 90K for my instrument, but uh, that might change depending on what sounds good to yourself. So trust your ear and figure out the right input impedance. And then first block we've got here is the pitch whammy. This is obviously copied after the Digitech whammy. So we can set the pitch that the pedal is at when we have our heel down. If it's at zero, it's bypassed completely actually. So it's not even like it's giving you a digital recreation of your sound, it's bypassed. You're getting the dry tone of your violin. Toe pitch is plus 12, that's 12 semitones. So it's gonna be a full octave when you go up to that top uh, with the toe all the way down. I set the mix at 60%, so you'll actually be hearing some of the original violin tone and then 60% of the affected signal. You can really notice that if I stop halfway in between. You'll hear the fundamental pitch of the violin and also the piece that is changing pitch. And then adding in some other things here, we have the EQ getting rid of some information that we don't necessarily need. This is the same EQ block I use for all my presets. Basically what we're doing is cutting out some of the lows that get in the way. If you've got a, um, a violin with a piezo pickup, then you've got like this kind of annoying low thumping sound that you'll need headphones to hear. So the EQ shapes up the sound of the violin a little bit to send into the amp block and it also gets rid of some information that we don't need with the low cut and the high cut. So there's the settings for that. Moving into the amp block, uh, this is my clean amp setting from the last video. So if you watch that I advertised three different uh, Helix violin amp sounds. So I designed a clean sound, that's what this is, and mildly overdriven, then a really heavy gain sound. So I'm using the clean one for these three ambient patches. We've got the jazz chorus model here with these settings. Uh, you'll see foot switch three over here, that's because I have assigned foot switch three to be a solo boost. So that just helps you cut through if you're playing in a full band context and you need a bit of a boost. Foot switch 3 is always going to get that for you on all of my presets. And then here's the settings for the cabinet. And then jumping into the first effect here. This is like the TC Electronic Mimic. It's a doubler basically. So uh, you set it up, it just kind of thickens the sound. It's like a very light chorus effect. Uh, and I don't have that set up to any foot switch. So actually it's just always on. I think it just improves the sound of the violin. Let's hear what this sounds like, by the way. So that's really without anything, without any of the ambient effects. Then moving into the reverb block here, this is just like a really nice modulated delay. I'd spend a bit of time coming up with these settings to make it sound as good as possible. And I really like how this sounds. So I'm gonna use this block for a lot of other presets in the future, I think. And then the delay. Uh, by the way, reverb is routed to foot switch one. So you can turn that on and off with trails. You can turn off the reverb with foot switch one. I like putting the reverb in front of the delay because it really softens it up. Traditionally, uh, you might find that it's more useful to put the delay in front of the reverb, but if you're trying to make ambient music, the verb in front of the delay is a nice change. And then for the delay, this is just a bucket brigade type delay. It has a little model of the boss, a uh, little red box there, I forget the name of it, DM2 or something. But it's, uh, it's a pretty basic delay. Let's turn off the reverb here, we can focus on the delay. Just a very warm sounding delay to add a little bit of length to the reverb. That's how I interpret it.
And then let's start playing with the pitch now. So you can use it uh, in any combination. If you don't want the pitch whammy, then maybe replace that with something else, like a filter. That might be a cool thing to manipulate, uh, or a compressor. Let's do a pluck passage. So I'm just turning on an outboard compressor I have so that we can get a little bit more length out of everything. Anyway, there's preset one, and we'll jump over to the second one now. Remember, set your input impedance as always. And then I've put the EQ block first here, followed by the amp block, same as before, no need to go into it, followed by the mimic copy, the double tick they call it, the doubler. So looking at the first piece of this effect here, we've got three parts, delay, reverb, and then a vibrato. Uh, the delay is a dual delay. You can see here that the settings are pretty much the same for the right and left channels. This is a really cool effect because you can manipulate the right and left sides if you're running in stereo. You can manipulate them individually. That was hard to get out. Uh, left time set to 490 milliseconds and right time a little bit less at 384. So this gets a really cool ping pong sounding effect. There's no relation. There's no tempo relation between those two times, but it sounds really cool and you can create massive pads with it. Feedback's set very high, so the delay is going to last very long, actually. If you're watching the screen, you saw the left and right mix go up and down, and that's because I have the expression control, my, uh, my foot controller assigned to control the left and right mix between 0% and 50%. So um, there's a lot of cool ways to use this effect. Let's just hear what the delay sounds like if we bow it. and we can shut it off instantly with the expression. All right, let's start adding in the other effects. Now looking at the reverb block here, this is the plateau block that uh, is built into the Helix unit, and we're just getting a very clean plate style reverb from it. I really dig it. That's with no delay again, by the way. Just very thick on the reverb, very long decay, but the mix is not set too high at 37%. So it's not really getting in the way too much. It's just kind of, kind of creating like a, a, a pad that just sits there. And nothing on the reverb is being controlled by the expression. Although I do have the reverb routed to foot switch one, so you can turn that on and off as you like. And then finally, a bit of bubble vibrato after the reverb. I love this sound. A really cool thing is to put a stereo vibrato effect after a reverb signal. So you're affecting the entire reverb, not just the dry signal. And you got like a really cool, almost kind of warped vinyl, like an old record kind of sound to it. If you don't really dig this effect, I've assigned it to foot switch two, so you can turn it on and off at your leisure. So let's start playing together with all three of these effects here, the delay, the reverb, and the bubble vibrato. And I'm going to be sharing with you a couple tips on how I think it might be cool to use it. Uh, the first thing that came to my mind, and this is kind of how I developed the preset, was uh, thinking, you know, just as um, you can fade in the, the, the delay as much as you'd like, depending on which passage you're playing. That's with it all the way off. If you're watching the screen now, you can see it coming up very slowly. 
So 20 might be a really cool uh, place to set it if you're just looking for kind of a lead sound, if you want to come out with a melody. You can play, you can play pretty fast and it's not going to get in the way of your own playing. If we push that up to 50, you can hear where it's going to start to get in the way. Of course, if you like that effect, that might work for you. Uh, every, there's so many things you can do with these three effects. Another really cool thing that I thought of once I created this preset and I played around with it a little bit was uh, if you start, you know, keep the mix all the way off so you're not hearing the delay, start playing a couple arpeggios. And then fade it in, you can hear that arpeggio start to fade it out a little bit. So just some stuff you can play around with and hopefully this will be a cool sound for you to mess around with. Moving on to the third preset, again set your input impedance. This one gets a little interesting. Uh, we've got the normal EQ block and the normal amp block as before, the normal doubler here, and then we're going to split it in parallel. So what we're doing with the expression control is routing where the signal is going. So in the first posi position with the toe down, we're sending it through this B path. And this is going to be kind of our special effect. And if we put it all the way with the heel down, this is going to send it straight. It's going to bypass this weird effect pretty much. You see it's at 85%. Uh, so we're still getting a little bit of signal through B, but it's mostly going to go just directly to the output through this reverb block, which is just a really nice plate sound. Very long form delay. Now, if we ramp it up a little bit, we'll start to add in these. I'm going to isolate the reverb right now so you can hear the reverb as it is. This is pretty much like fully sustaining on itself. That'll go almost as long as you want it to. All right, if we add the delay to it, we have a kind of almost self-oscillating feedback too. I've set the feedback all the way up at 99%, so we're not quite creating a feedback loop where it's exploding out of control, but it is sitting there. You can hear it laying there at a very low volume, still sitting behind my speech. And uh, I also have the expression control controlling the feedback. So we can control that down to 94, where it dies away. So we set up the sound going in there now. I'm going to roll it back to 94, and it'll die away a little bit. A cool way to relate this to another instrument might be to say that it's almost like the sustain pedal on a piano. It lasts a lot longer. And when you pull it off, when you pull it back to the heel position, it still takes about 10 seconds to decay. But if you want to play an arpeggio, let's push it down to the toe position again. And then you want to play over it. Let's change the arpeggio. Let's go with F major now. It's just kind of a cool way you can create ambient pads with a violin and you might confuse someone to thinking there's a synthesizer or something on stage. This is probably my favorite of the three. To be honest, I spent a lot of time creating this one, more than the others. Uh, it's just really unique, I think, and I can see a couple different places where I can go. If I want to expand this effect a little bit, maybe I can create something that functions a little bit more like a sustain pedal, where you can hold it down and it's going to ring out as long as you want, and then when you pull it back, it'll it'll decay right away. I'm sure there's something you can do with um, maybe something in the modulation with the slow gear copy, wherever that is. Um, and I'm, I'm sure there's, there's something cool you can do. So stay tuned for future stuff. I'm sure I'm going to have another video like this in the future. 
I hope you guys enjoyed that video. I had a ton of fun making these presets, the ambient sounds with the violin. And if you're interested in more, check out some videos I've done in the last couple of weeks. I'll have links in the description to that. I do plenty of free presets all the time with the electric violin and with the guitar. In fact, I have a way you can get my entire library uh, for one price. It's a donation based, so whatever you feel like the package is worth it. I've got over 30 presets in there now. 12 are for electric violin, the rest are electric guitar, and it's ever expanding. So for a one-time donation of whatever amount you choose, you can get a lifetime's worth of access to my ever-growing library of sounds. So anyway, stay tuned for future videos with the Helix and the electric violin, and I'll see you next time.